Uh, good evening, everybody. Today is Monday, December 19th. 19th. Yeah. We're already in agreement. That's, That's good stuff. The first last <laughs> time. <laughs> um, we're the Budget Committee. This is a, a, a rather special meeting because uh, we're not really here tonight to uh, discuss the budget, but to meet and greet our new town manager and um, to just discuss um, what our role um, and strategy will be in preparing for the town's 2023 budget. So calling in a meet and greet, I'd like to have the budget committee members introduce themselves to each other and to our new town manager. I'll start, my name is Milt Simon. Um, I live on the Stackpole Road, I've been a resident of Durham uh, since early 1982. And I've been a member of the select board uh, of the budget committee. I believe this is my 24th year. Oh. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Rod Stimson. I live on uh, Emerson Road. Uh, let's see. I lived in Durham since 1970. Um, and I've been on the budget committee for about a minute and a half. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Heather Roy. I live on Hollowell Road. I have lived in Durham since 2002, and this is my second year, right? Yeah, my second year on the budget committee. I'm Mark Blake. Uh, I live on the Stackpole Road, along with Jill Songway, who's not here tonight. Um, you live with Jill? I, <laughs> I do Just remember her, yeah. <laughs> and I've been in Durham <laughs> since 1980-something uh, or other. 85, 86 or something. Mm. And this is my first trip around on the budget committee. See if I can help them out. Yeah, that's all I'm telling them. Okay. I'm Jane Race. I live on Bowie Hill. Um, this is my second time being on the budget committee. Um, I've been, I moved here in 86. So, and I am on the budget committee. Only The only reason I'm back is that we had a selectman last year make a comment i was sitting home watching the meeting and i got so irritated um that i said i i'm going back um and it was basically the gentleman said um i don't know why we need to go line by line on the budget as long as we're below the debt ceiling we're good and i thought wow that's kind of scary so that's why i'm back uh john talbot uh, first year on the budget committee and i also live on stack Neil Berry, I live on Stackpole Road as well. I've been here since 1983, and this is my fifth year on the Budget Committee. Al Purington, I live on Day Road. And what did we, we built a house in 72 there, but I won't tell you how many other years I've been in <laughs> prior to that. All right. You a native? Long time. Yes. Hmm. And 1950. Yeah. Um, okay. believe, it. believe it or not, Alan actually has more years on the budget committee, okay. although not consecutive, than I do. So I, I really do uh, salute him. That's yeah, I took a break and Milt said, please come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, glad to have you. well, thank you. Thank you all for introducing yourselves and thank you for allowing me to be your town manager. Um, it's been an interesting four months um, being in here and kind of diving into everything, especially the financials of of Durham and trying to get that all squared away and you know I come I come here with a from a different process than I gonna get into one now you know like usually town managers they start in a smaller town and work their way up well I was on a in Gardner which was a bigger community with a council completely different budget process than there is here going down to a smaller town um, so I just kind of wanted to meet and talk with everybody and kind of just go through your process, what I'm used to anyway, because this is going to be a little different for me from previous years, which is fine. It's beautiful. I'm not trying to change the process. It's just going to be a little, it's a little different, um, which will be educational for me, and hopefully I can bring some education to you. I mean, I've got 20 years of service and public service and been through a bunch of budget cycles with other communities and collaborated with other communities and if I can't bring any of that 20 years experience to Durham then I probably don't know why I'm here you know what I mean so 
you know, I just <clears throat> share that with you. And because there are different processes and different things we look at, and I just kind of want to discuss that and see where you folks are at, and maybe ask why why you are on the budget committee. Like you, line by line thing, you're you're really focused on the line by line item in the expense budget. Well, I, I don't know how you can, if we have to cut money from the budget, if you don't understand what line by line, how can you, how can you take anything away? Right. Um, and I guess originally I got on the budget committee just because I wanted to be an educated voter. Um, I don't like just, just winging it. Mm -hmm. So. Why, why, why did you want to jump on? Because somebody stopped at the house and said, could you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, I just got on just to help out for this next few months while they before they get to the new I have no intentions of running for this office after this I'm just here to help out my past experience of being on the board of selectmen should give me a little bit of insight and and there's a few things I might wonder why we still do we the way we do and maybe they're gonna have a good answer and I'll just leave them alone maybe mm -hmm. I'll suggest something different mm -hmm. Yeah. Heather, why did you um, I joined the budget committee because as a resident who wanted to be an informed voter I felt like there were not opportunities other than to um, watch meetings and hear what was being said but to actually be able to participate in anything leading up to the vote at town meeting um, I didn't understand the process. Mm -hmm. um, I've only been through one cycle, so I, I definitely still have a lot of questions. Um, but it was, it was basically so that I could understand the process so that when I was asking questions, I could ask educated questions at town meeting um, and about transparency and accountability, mm -hmm. which is really, really important to me. Um, and I feel like sometimes... Um, there's a lot more opportunity to be more transparent. Um, and so I, I advocate for that relentlessly. Mm -hmm. Good. Rod? I, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I just wanted to uh, be able to understand the process uh, better and, and hopefully uh, I thought maybe I could add another perspective to, to the committee. So uh, I said, let's give it a shot. Yep, good. Um, I did, as, as, as other members, I uh, ran for office to uh, become more educated on the process. Um, uh, when I first started going to uh, town meetings, um, I heard some complaints that I was asking too many questions and using <laughs> too much of, I had too much floor time because I had so many questions to ask and it was suggested that if I was to become a member of the budget committee, I could get I could get my questions answered and not um, necessarily take up so much of the town's time. And that made sense to me, and that's what prompted me to run that first year. And I'm pretty loyal at what I do. Usually when I start something, I'll stick with it for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, originally when I got on, it was when uh, we were, the budget committee was involved with the school process too, mm -hmm. and that has since changed. We have an individual vote on that. But I think one of the biggest things that I always advocated for was the involvement of the budget committee with the finances that have been going on throughout the year, not just two or three weeks out of the year. And one of my big pushes, too, at town meeting was educating the people at the town. This isn't just what the budget committee, well, this is what the budget committee voted on, but this is how we came to the conclusions on that information and educating the public mm -hmm. is usually it, it's uh, it's kind of amazing how people can come in with their own ideas but if you present the facts to them and educate them that's one of the best things we can do mm -hmm. absolutely you are very calm at doing that it took believe me the <laughs> first the first few <coughs> years it was nerve-wracking uh, and I I used to spend a lot of time making up spreadsheets and handing them out to budget committee members, and that has totally changed now, which it's, it's good because the town manager is more involved. We had an administrative assistant prior to the town manager process that was very involved and was doing that up front. But that, in many years ago, I'm talking 25, 30 years ago, that did not happen. Mm -hmm. But 
when it's changed, we've progressed, and it, it it's gotten better. I believe it has. Good. Uh, same reasons everybody else want to be part of the process and have a voice that hopefully clear and understandable. Serve your community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect. This, the yeah. same reasons with, I guess, the added one that uh, my family in-laws have always been active in town politics as well. So, Yeah. Well, good. See, when I, I just, when I originally got on the board, and I don't I think it was in the paper recently, they used to appoint uh, budget committee members on the floor of the town, from different sections of the town. Three members would be appointed from the floor of the town meeting. Wow. Nobody took out papers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. And I remember going to the <coughs> church as a young, very young person, with my parents going to town meeting at the Union Church. <laughs> wow. Well, so I have a question for you. Yeah. What do you understand the role of the budget committee to be? To vet the budget. To what? To vet the budget. To vet it out, to make mm -hmm. sure it's reasonable and it's understood, and to make sure that uh, that you're sort of understanding and agreeing what um, is being funded or disagreeing. Yeah. <laughs> so do you know what do you know what the budget is supposed to to actual serve? I mean, it's really services that the town provides, right? I mean, when we talk about this expense budget, we're really talking about what services does the does the town want to provide to its citizens and has anyone asked that question in any any meeting at all about what they want to serve well, like all. like paving i mean you, you definitely we definitely got a trash pick up that's wicked pricey have we have we talked about that it's like what services do you want to provide do you want you know the, there are questions that you should have do you want snowpack do you want you know Go black on, and black and wet roads after yeah. the storm because <laughs> those are those are the questions that really need to be asked to be able to put together a budget that provides the services the town is looking for um, so that's really what the budget I mean if you don't want any services we could take this thing and just go we're done we don't we don't we're good but it's the services that cost money, right? So it's that question, what do we want for services? It's really the first question that really ought to be answered. A lot of budgets that I've worked on, there's usually, not usually, there is, there's a meeting and that's the question that gets asked. It's usually the elected officials get together. Like where I came from, it was the council came in on a Saturday and it was all recorded and they said, this is what we want to do. We want to hold the line on infrastructure. We don't want to do this. We want to do that. We don't want to. We don't want the mill rate going up by a certain amount. Mm -hmm. And as long as you achieve that, they don't care what the line by line is because they're looking at the budget impact on the taxes. That's their main concern. When when they see a mill rate go up a lot, they're going to ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. But if the tax impact is very much in line or it's not that much at all, they're good. They don't even look at it. They'll just. Yeah, that's fine. We like it. Well, the unfortunate thing is our municipal side is the smallest part of the budget. The Absolutely. school is what really pushes everything up. Absolutely. So you're, you're really only talking 25% of the budget. Mm -hmm. I'll show you in a second. I'll hand some stuff up. Exactly right. It's, so you're, you're talking about, if you're talking about 1,000 here or 2,000 there, you're talking that with inside 25% of the overall budget. And it really, when you add it all up, it's really not that much impact on your taxes. But it can't be like going to the dollar store. When mm -hmm. you come out of there, you spend a hundred bucks <laughs> and you didn't plan it. So that's that's why I agree right. with you on the line by line. That may be the places we cut a little here and there, and we still know that in that budget, they can move that money around once it's approved. As but long that, as as long as you have enough in that article. Right. They can move it up or down, whatever. So that's so to me the line by line is a lot better to look at. Especially when it comes down to miscellaneous, I get ten grand. Really? I want to know what miscellaneous is for ten grand. So to me, I I kind of like to know that stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. No, but, it, I, but that ten grand on the whole budget is really my. I, I get that, but if you have ten there and then ten over here and then at the well, fire station, the, you know, that starts to add up. It absolutely does. And that's what we're not just trying to make sure that the, whatever the budget is that the selectman comes up with, that we kind of vet that. 
if we think this place is, especially with the history that's here, that we can cut a little and still not jeopardize what we want, that's what we're here to do. Right. Because in the end, we're here for the taxpayers, not for the suckman, not for the, the... Well, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So I do. I do, but if 10000 gets cut and it's a tenth of a cent right. on the taxes, then but at you, the end of the day, it really does... You're, no, but You're going I've down a rabbit town. hole when it I've really... The, yeah, but I've been on the town floor when we spent an hour and a half on 500 bucks. Right. So, I mean, I don't think we should do that. <laughs> and, 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 and approve a fire truck like that, uh, right? Yes, sir. So, you know, so it's just those questions right. of really, what's the budget serving? Yeah. So when you were talking about um, what do we want to do, like what, or, you know, what our role is, I think that part of the frustration for us is that by the time it gets to us, it's a done deal. But we've had this conversation before, too. It, you know, so we, we go through and we do the line by line and that type of thing. But in terms of like the trash being expensive, by the time we get to where we are going line by line, the, the trash contract is it exists already. It does, but it ends June 30th, so it ends this year. So we got to get that out to bid, and we're not going to have the numbers to put into the budget like we would like to have because it's in the process of out to bid. And we'll talk about some of those schedules because one of the things I think the town needs to do is go to a fiscal year, July 1st to June 30th. We're one of the few towns that doesn't have that schedule. And if we went to that schedule, that would free up a little bit of time to and we'd be in line with the state we'd be in line with the county we'd be in line with the school to help with that budget we know what the school asking for and we can go according to that you know we can start building the budget with those numbers in mind but if we do if we do that do we have to have an additional tax so you either there's a couple ways of going about it you can either do a six month uh, budget or 18 month budget mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm going to talk to MMA and I think Kevin has looked into it too um, and there's good and bad in both you do a six month budget that's great but by the time you go through the process and get a six month budget you're going to turn right around and do an eight, another year or you can do an 18 month budget and just collect taxes twice a year and you'll start every six months so they'd be collected in April and in October well, my, my biggest concern would be in changing to that what is the financial impact to the individual homeowner well we got to look into that but in the long term it's better because you're collecting them twice a year so the cash flow for the right. homeowner is going to be better because they won't have to come up with them all at once and it'll be better cash flow for us in here too because we we run pretty lean and towards may june yeah. we're running out of cash so you stay away from the tan right exactly in which uh, I, I didn't even know what a tan was until i came to durham <laughs> I just knew it as something that you got in the summertime if you stayed in the sun. <laughs> so that was kind of interesting to me that you run that thin, mm -hmm. that you can't kind of get a budget where you're pretty safe and sound, mm -hmm. but you're going to go out and borrow money and pay the interest. Mm -hmm. You're buying trucks, but you're borrowing money to pay your light bill. So there's some things that are a little wonky that I think we need to sort of look at. So one of the other things when we were talking about the line by line, um, you know, we, Durham, oh, I've, and I've spoken to you about this too, Durham and Pownall collectively together cannot outvote Freeport for the school budget. And so we really, I mean, we can go to those school budget meetings and we can um, have an impact, have our voice heard there. But when it comes time to vote on the school budget, I, I think that residents in Durham really feel, and I mean, they are, they technically are outnumbered right. by that vote. And so the municipal budget, even though it's only 25% of what our tax bill is, is really the place where I think residents feel like they actually can vote things down if they want to. Um, or you know, have an impact that way on what their tax bill is gonna be because when it comes to the school, unless for whatever reason, and it never happens as long as I've been paying attention, 
that Freeport would vote down the school budget. And I'm not advocating for that. I'm just saying it doesn't happen. The doesn't. school budget always passes. Yeah, it's pretty so hard to I touch think, the school. Yeah, and I think that that's part of the reason why, you know, people do try to micromanage this part of the budget so much because we don't have any control over that mm -hmm. or people feel like we don't have any control over that. Um, in terms of the budget committee going line by line, I, I feel like, and, and we talked about this, but I like for it to be known, um, you know, we want to be able to, and I don't mean to speak for everybody, but I think that we all feel this way, at least in our meeting last year, this is the way that it was explained, <coughs> is that we want to be able to justify mm -hmm. how we arrived at our number. Right. So we're not just taking, you know, $1.2 million public works budget, and now we want that to be $1 million. We're just going to say $1 million and not help arrive at that number right and where i feel like that is helpful <coughs> on the other end of that is that if the the town votes for what we chose we have gone line by line so now when you or whoever does it has to go back and put those numbers in because we're in april when we say yes or no to whatever you got to go back to january right and put the numbers in and so if we've gone line by line right. and figured that out, when you go put that number in, you know how we arrived at it. If we just say we're taking $250,000 off this, now you've got to go make that number work in all of those categories. But still they have the flex, they being the selectmen and the town manager has the flexibility to adjust that accordingly based on what the actual article <coughs> was stated. I would like to think that if you're going to cut $50,000 off an article, that you also suggest where you want it taken out of line by line. Oh, we, we can make that suggestion. Yeah. Right. But ultimately, it's your responsibility right. where that's going to be cut. And that has happened in the right. past. Yeah. That's how we've taken it. We've justified it. I remember Milt saying at number side, this is where we took the money out of that we thought was fair. So Line by line. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and that's you know, in the end, it's fair. you can still, to a point, you can move that around. You know, if they, if they, it, it, yeah, it's very true. If the intention is coming from a board of eight people, nine people, and the townspeople specifically saying we really want that fifty thousand dollars cut here, I would certainly be honoring that because uh, it's all about credibility. Mm -hmm. Your credibility, our credibility, and if it's legit, right? If it's you can legit, explain right. it, why it should or shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. They'll understand. Right. The townspeople that come right. to these town meetings, they're not stupid people. No, no, no. Some of these people do a lot more research no. than Stuckman do. Right. So. <clears throat> right. It's just that you're funding something. You're funding the cost of doing the business for the town. And if you right. get if you get really lean, it gets it gets tight. And mm -hmm. then it's mm -hmm. we get in we get in trouble. But anyway, I, I digress from that anyway. Were um, you were you suggesting at, with your opening comments that that even before we discuss numbers, that whether it's, I don't know, whether it's town-wide or the select board and the budget committee, or that somehow in the process, we for, before we discuss money, we discuss goals that... I think that's a good, yeah, I think that's important to, to get out there because it gives the manager some direction on where to go to build the budget. Like this budget, I'm just kind of like going on whatever's there with no real aim at anything. Like in the previous municipalities, we knew where we were headed. We knew the council wanted a certain number that we had to, to aim for. So we would, and we started our process three months ahead of time. And we're starting to hear, I mean, it's late, it's tight. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking it's because you all want actuals of what we actually spent and <laughs> Well, we didn't. I didn't have that luxury in Gardner. You knew what you were percent-wise spent, and you knew what you had left, and you had to figure it out because time was. I mean, there was a lot going on. So. Well, you should know that so, now. What's that? You should, based on what your budget is, you sh you should certainly know what percentage you've spent. Oh, absolutely. I I knew what percentage spent three months ago. I could have started this three months ago and not given you the actuals and kind of mm -hmm. giving you an idea where we would need to be today. I didn't. I don't have to wait for actuals to do that. That's what I'm saying. We started the pro where I have been municipal government before. We started way earlier than we start here. 
Mm -hmm. We had more time to flush it out. Right, exactly. You know, here it's it's tight. I mean, we're mm -hmm. we're putting this budget together. We're putting the annual report together. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things coming in at once, and when you have that many things coming in at once, mistakes get made. Things. I mean, it just get. It's, I'm I'm a little bit excited to see how it's going to go out, but I kind of have a feeling we're going to be we're going to be. So you're kind of concerned about the finance part of it. Not not so much the finance. It's just getting everything together. How'd last year go? Mm. It's always uh, last tight. year it's wasn't pretty tight. right so this is another reason why i kind of wanted to have this meeting so we can all kind of get on the same page because you should you should feel fortunate because we used to have the town meeting the first saturday in march yeah that's the first saturday in april we got a whole extra month <laughs> <laughs> so, so i think and the fire chief started this years ago with his five-year rolling plan didn't yeah. yes he wasn't did. it encouraged Bill, that every other yeah every other department start doing the same thing yeah. we never, that was we never, capital that was just capital. capital a lot of it was but there was okay. never i think the fire chief was the first bill saint michelle the fire chief at the time he was one that started with his a lot of it was capital but he kept a five-year rolling calendar right he was the only and we always were stressing that right you got to be looking forward further than a year when you have a large department Right. The public works is that way. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we we usually voted on if they was able to save any in their budget that went into whatever that was decided that year. But it was always like a thirty thousand up to fifty thousand different years of money put aside in the capital for that right. department. Mm -hmm. I think I think that, that we should still go that way. I'm not I'm not for this one capital budget for the whole town because if I had to put my budget together. And I know that I'm not going to be able to take my capital budget that I've saved and my I put bother. in. I'm going to spend every single right. dime I could. I I'm agree. not going to try. Yeah, to that's a little irresponsible, though. But yeah, that's, that's what happens. That's what happens. That's what I'm just, you know, well, in all honesty, that. yeah, that's what that's, happens. I mean, that's. But the good, the good thing about having a capital improvement committee is they're looking at the total picture for the town. They're not just looking for what am I going to, I'm, I'm running the fire department. It's all I care about is the fire department. I don't care about anybody else in the mm -hmm. town. And you get, you have a group and they're doing it based on priority and they're analyzing that a lot better than we ever did. I mean, it could go the other way too, where they don't spend so they can get that money in capital to get that new truck or whatever. It can go either way. There's always you, two You sides might convince me sometime, but right now I'm not <laughs> convinced <laughs> that's the way to go. That's how my vote would be. Oh. I, just, I have one comment on this, uh, looking at the big picture at the beginning of this whole thing. The, the select board has made it very clear year after year, as long as I've been on the committee, that it's not our job to make proposals for policy or how to spend money or where to spend money it's to make a recommendation on the budget. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're not interested in what we think about what we need in the fire truck or... Well, the capital kind of committee does that, though. Yeah, so there's not that much, I don't know what the right word is, forward-looking we can do. We, our job is to look at the budget and make a recommendation. Well, it's forward-looking for one year. It's like I told the capital um, committee the other day when we was in a meeting. It's with all those schedules and looking out five years, it's really a five-year schedule with a one-year plan because you're really talking about 2023. Unless, of course, you're going to fund a big municipal building or something like that where you want to tuck away seventy-five, dollars $100,000 each year, then you would make a commitment to do that and it would be for that specific thing. But but for the most part, they're, they're, they're going to allocate money for 2023 knowing what the schedules are coming up for mm -hmm. and they may put money in reserves mm -hmm. like we do yeah we do. <clears throat> right yeah, always yeah. Have, yeah so um so i just kind of you know because that's kind of what i'm used to it, it used to having something to fund you know maybe next year or two years they'll, they'll do something with the eureka center rather it's with opera funds or not but that that makes a that makes a difference on where we go as a town. It's just kind of nice to to know that if, so, if roads are looking good and you don't want to pave three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars, that's good to know up front so we can adjust it in the in the in, in the budget. So last year we voted for the door for Eureka. Did we get a door? I don't think so. I don't think so either. The double door, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right? I mean, that yeah. was what. So when we went line by line, there was a budget request. I know, I know. There was a budget request for a new door over there, and 
but I think um, if anyways, we were convinced to say that this is what we were going to recommend. That was one of the places that the select board, I think, cut. Um, and we still don't have a door. So I, I'm, I'm interested in the follow up also of like, I know, and that's a very small thing on a grand scale, yeah. but that was something very specific, you know, that we had talked about and, and now we're almost, we're almost there and we still don't have that door. So, you know, those are the kinds of things like the checks and balances sort yeah. of thing that I'm, I, as a person on this committee, I'm interested right. in. Right. And, and a little bit to that CIP thing, when I mean, you said it's irresponsible, true, but, and even the board said last year, the only one that has given any money back was public works. So if you're going to take whatever he gives back or whatever his capital is, now you're going to spread it out to everybody else. Where is the incentive? I don't think it's necessary that he's being irresponsible or, or anybody, any one of these departments are. But if that's how it works, I'm going to start buying things. Isn't that you can call it irresponsible, but I, or selfish, or whatever you want. But right. if that's how it works, that's how it works. I mean, I, having watched it on television last year, there was a lot of time spent taking money out of budget. So that I got the impression that some of the, the departments wanted this, were cut to that, which is not bad. But I don't think there's a lot of slack in there. I no, mean, the, most yeah, of the time not, there's not a lot of fluff in them. No. Yeah, there's no there's but, not much fat in this no, budget. No, I can I tell understand. you that yeah. at all. I mean, if it was a piece of steak, I wouldn't order it because right. it wouldn't taste very good. <laughs> but I mean, right? some work that much harder to keep it right. Tight, so. so, like my my comment about this last year was um, that the fire chief, and, and this is just an example. Let's just say this is an example, and I'm using air packs because I know that that was one of the things that was part of the budget conversation last year. That if he knows that he wants that and he needs that and that type of thing, he might work harder. And I think the fire chief is amazing. I'm just using oh, yeah. this as an example to buy, you know, less expensive toilet paper or be more cautious of this, that, the other thing to be able to have more money there for something like that, that he knows that he needs. You know, I, I'm not saying that I'm advocating for that kind of thing. I'm just saying that is part of the mentality that if it was, if it was department directed back to them in a cost saving way, that they would be able to fund their, you know, things that they want to do because it's not every year that the taxpayers vote to put the kind of money into capital improvements right. that they're looking for. Right. You know, like for us, we had this whole culvert thing that happened last year. That's another thing I'd like to know where all of that ended up. Um, this whole culvert thing that happened last year. And I don't remember exactly how it worked out, but we needed to add $50,000 more to that capital improvement account. And so we took $50,000, I might have my numbers wrong, out of a different account I, I so that we still came out at the same place, but we took it from over here to add it over here to cover an expense that was needed in an emergent kind of way. And it never got spent. Well, it didn't, it, are you talking about the one on Craig and Meeting House Road and Swamp Road? Those two culverts. I think so. And then something two, about the state changed. They, they didn't. They didn't happen because the state changed the requirements. The one on uh, Quaker Meeting House Road. They basically said, and it's hard to believe, but they basically said you're going to have to turn. That's not going to be culverts. It's going to have to turn it into a cement bridge type yeah. because the salmon come up that. They, this is what they said. The salmon come up that brook. I don't know that salmon have ever come up that brook. I don't think they ever have. <clears throat> but they drastically changed uh, the requirements. Therefore, it pushed everything out. Right. Too expensive. Yeah. And, and I just want to clear, because I know people are watching, where I used the example of the town crew, I have no problems with the fire chief. I think he's a great guy, too. But that was just an example. Right, right. And I, I get it. I say that it. because, yes, I do go down to the town garage and do some work once in a while. Day a week, day a month, day every three months. So I'm not down there making millions of dollars. So just so the people watching don't sit there and go, yeah, that's why he's advocating. That was just an example. So. Right, right. And that's all this is, just <laughs> sort of an open discussion. That's what I just right. want to just get your experiences and kind of share with you what mine have been and what I look at. Yeah. One thing that I would also really love to see happen you know, this is another thing that I'm constantly, you know, advocating for is an actual process. I mean, a written process. And I know that we have, you know, the, the you are going to present the budget 
to us and the select board jointly. Mm -hmm. The select board comes up with their budget. They give that to us. We are making recommendations based off of what you've presented and what they've presented. We agree. And then it goes back to the selectmen. They can adjust to meet where we are or keep where they want, you know, keep it where they want to keep it. And then we go to town meeting. Um, and all of that happens within like six weeks, like the is getting it, to the Is number. it your plan to change that process or to stick with No, not this year. I'm going to ride the process <laughs> out and see how it sort of goes and maybe make some small changes along the way. I'm certainly making changes to this budget right here, I can tell you that. I'll glue that back together. This <laughs> thing is, uh, this, this is, this isn't put together real well. It's, it's a little bit sloppy, so I can talk about that a little bit. Um, so that about, about that but that this is a side thing. so back to that process question and i know that it's so tight and it, there isn't a lot of time for anything but if either if we change to a different fiscal year or if somehow and i would volunteer to do this but i would obviously not be the only one there i would need someone else maybe mill maybe joe whatever um when we did the land use public hearing mm -hmm. that gives residents the opportunity to be able to ask questions and have those questions answered Absolutely. that really was a sticking point for me because through that process that i just explained Locking at no them. point can a resident ask a question and get an answer mm -hmm. and and i that is like if you have a question and you want to know the answer before town meeting or you and it could even just be a process question like i don't understand why you're doing it this way they can reach out to you, mm -hmm. but I really feel like that public hearing process has been very, very good for the residents that are interested in, the, in this last meeting. That and yeah. the one we had before that, the yeah. one that the planning board did about you know this stuff. I I think that those are really important, and it's it's absolutely one night that I would be willing to give up my time to be able to go and answer people's questions about the budget ahead of town meeting. Yeah, yeah. That that's yeah. The process. I mean, it's pretty much laid out in the schedule that I that I have right here somewhere with me. I thought I brought it. Um, and at least the schedule of it is yeah, it is in here, which basically says how it goes. And we'll talk about this too. But more on that whole process. You know, when as a, as a new manager coming in and, and being a department head of a. $2.1 million budget, actually two departments I manage, and getting started three months prior. So I would get my budget like at the end of March for a July 1st start of a new budget. And I'm like, why are we so running so late? How come we don't start the process sooner? I'm thinking, and what I hear is, well, they want actuals. That's that's what I'm hearing. And it's like, well, if that's, is that really what's driving is you want to know what the actuals are, and that's why we're starting like in the eleventh hour. Well, it's all, it's I, I, don't all. I don't think you're talking to the right people about that. We don't have nothing to do with putting the budget together. Well, the process is the way the way it is, though. I mean, you've, been, you've had this well. process for for a long time. Do with that. Well, I, th well th I think one of the key things about the actuals is if you're you're presenting a new budget and we're comparing it with the previous year's budget, but how much how, what was the actual expenditure for the previous year? So if you're asking, we want to know, wait a minute, do you have money left over? Did you overexpend? Where's the money coming from for the you new can, budget? But you can tell percent-wise where you are. Remember, we, <clears throat> It's right. a little bit more work, but it gives you a little bit more time. You know what I mean? Because I, I asked myself that very question. Why are we so, because it just crams everything in. Mm -hmm. And remember, th this budget we're talking about is a forecast. I mean, I could be asking for something that's 5000 and you folks might say, well, how about $3,500? we are both probably going to be wrong, <laughs> right? Because it's a fork. I don't know what the actual price is going to be in 2023. The select board don't know. You folks don't know. So what number do you go with? It could be more or it could be less by the time we get through 2023. So well, We know most of it. We know what wages are going to be. We know what well, some of it. going to be. We, yeah, know, we know a lot of it. Well, it's sort of. I don't know what wages are going to be right now. Well, you we're going to they, establish if, them. Well, but we haven't had that discussion. That's another one of those goal settings is where do you want wages to be? Because that, cause that matters because there's a lot of things in here. Workman's comp is based on wages. 
there's a lot of things that you have to know what the wages are to be able to estimate your FICA and all of that sort of stuff. And I'm, I'm guessing at this point, because I don't know what, what it's going to be. If you look at a total budget, a lot of people want to know what's the bottom line. That's and, it. But if I, exactly right. you ask me, what can I afford for an increase? I don't want an increase. Somebody else could say, I don't want an increase. Mm -hmm. I'd like to, have to see a reduction. That has happened. Some people say it's never happened. Yes, it has happened. We've had years where there's been no increase, but that that is a really tough one. It, we can say that it's, it's tough every year. Exactly. Maybe much more so this year because where inflation is. Yep, and prices yeah. going. But that's the whole. My whole point is, this is a forecast. We don't really know. Most. Yeah, sure. Your your trio software. We just got a bill for twenty one grand. Yeah, that's a that's a hard fixed cost we can put that in as 21 grand but mm -hmm. most of the items in this budget you don't know what it's going to end up being at the end of 2023 I have no idea you don't mm -hmm. so but you can uh, use you can use the previous years you could as a guideline you can and, and you can the use the previous things, years and right. previous years and just keep in mind that right COVID really messed up with those previous years mm -hmm. too I mean we it's very difficult to forecast I mean fuel look at fuel it went up a lot now it's working its way down so it rarely right after so christmas how do you how do you budget for that what's the right number and i mean that's why this is a good process to sort of vet it out but you're not going to nail it this what you don't want to end up doing is trying to get to zero at the end of this budget you can't do it mm -hmm. i mean if you do you're running way too tight mm -hmm. and, and and i'll give you and i'll give you an example of some of the things that are really w different in here um we have two employees, right, that don't take insurance. So they get a $1,200 stipend and plus we pay their dental. Well, that's how it's budgeted. So you don't budget for the person, you budget for the position. Because if they leave and then someone else comes in, we have to offer them the benefits that the town does. So that's either going to be single or family. That's a huge difference between 1500 bucks versus 11000 or 20000 and we're not budgeting for it. See, right. that right there is the kind of explanation that would help oh. on town floor for people to understand why yeah. that looks the way that it looks. Right. Right? Would you agree? Oh, and yeah. At, oh, yeah. And there's a few things, at least this particular budget, but there's a few things like that where we just got to get the town kind of caught up, and it's going to hurt because it hasn't been done that way for for a long time. So just remember that you fund the position, not the person. It's, it's been talked about, too, a, a lot since I was been involved about that fiscal year problem. But it's never really been, it's been a hard sell or, or hard to come up with a good solution that's good for not just the budget, but for the taxpayers. Right. Yeah, so. well, so like the school is fiscal year, so we'd have their, what they're looking for as far as what the impact to the taxes or the mill rate. So would that even some change? of our big Even some of our biggest contracts, the, the our trash, that's a July 1st thing. I tried to get numbers from them. They're not giving them out. They're just not going to give them out right now. So there's another forecast. I'm just guessing. We, we, we all are at that point. A lot of these numbers, yes, you have your actuals and you have previous year's actuals and what you budgeted for. and what. But they're still not, you're not going to narrow that down to the You're dollar. never going to get exact. Never. No, and that's, and that's something, I mean, because they don't know what they got to pay. Right. You know, they don't, I mean, they're guessing too, and I get that. I think everybody's, I think everybody in public themselves is So, so what's that. changed in the trash thing that you can't get a real number by the time it goes? So it was a three-year contract, so they've been working off a contract from 19, 2019, 20, and 21, and it's up. So we haven't gotten numbers from them with the COVID impact, you know, like diesel fuel and all that sort of stuff. So I don't know. You but can almost year, guarantee. Last price went up a lot. But well, it, it was in the budget. It was in the budget, so they. But it wasn't. They it wasn't a, a, it wasn't a contract price. price. Yeah, it was. I, no, it wasn't. It was I in the contract. Did, didn't they it's do a, a one-year extension because of COVID? I feel like I remember a conversation about this. The they price just, went up a lot. It did. It did go up. But remember, oh, so he then, was going to look into like what, how to deal with the recycling. The reason thing. why it went up a lot was it was because of the, the COVID and the amount of trash that our town so, was. So I haven't been able to find the amendment to that contract. <laughs> that says how much it went up. I've got the original, I found that. And, 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 and here's one thing that I want you all to try to understand. 
I'm coming in here, two administrations. You know, you had Ruth, who was great, right? She did her thing. She had everything in her spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Then you had Kathy. She had everything done in spreadsheets. None of them line up. None of them are the same name. I'm trying to flush all this stuff out myself mm -hmm. and try to get down to the real numbers, and I'm having a hard time doing it, to be honest with you. I, I mean, there's probably 25 spreadsheets in there with the same information in it, and none of it freaking matches up. So isn't, isn't Trio driving that? Some of the stuff was in Trio. Some of it's in Excel spreadsheets. Wow. Like the reserve accounts are in Excel spreadsheets. They weren't part of the chart of accounts in the Trio. Mm. And maybe some of that don't match up because maybe all the ones you're looking at weren't really never finished. That's why they don't. It's hard. It's uh, yeah, hard, it's it. hard yeah. to look at someone else's spreadsheet and figure out, okay, what it, what what does it say? So yeah. I'm working with the auditor right now to try to try to get to a bottom where we are so I can move forward with so when, real numbers. Is the audit, has the auditor been in? So I'm inviting you to the next select boards meeting. The auditor's coming in. <laughs> And uh, I'll share it. This is what you're going to see. And I would, I would come. I would come to the. Can I ask a question about I, the fiscal year? I thing? would come to the meeting. This is basically what she's going to present. Um, if we, if we did figure out what the impacts are and whatnot, and switch to a fiscal year, does that? How does that impact town meeting? Because like right now, town meeting is in April. So it would be, it'd be in June. Town meeting would be in June. Right, because the the the. Budget would have to start July first, okay. so you'd have to approve it. So my a lot of town meetings are in June, by the by, by So I, what I would, what I wonder about is like right now, and I'm not advocating for this. I'm asking because yeah. I want to understand. We have our town meeting in April, but what we're approving is a budget that's already been three months ago being by used, already. right? So yeah, that's another reason why you should change. Right. So that that so what I was trying to figure out was if we're talking about aligning with the school budget, yeah, and state um, revenue sharing and all of that. That yeah. right. Then, but we would still. I know that our form of government would not get rid of town meeting. No. Um. I'm just wondering how we we would still have. We vote on the school budget by ballot. Mm hmm. And we vote on our municipal budget on town floor. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't change. They would just be closer to each other. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, that's what I just wanted to understand. Yeah. <clears throat> we would be able to put what the school's budget is into the overall town budget. And we, we wouldn't necessarily be guessing. I guess you all been pretty good, one to two percent within what they're doing. But you would know. You so, would know what that was. So you could do we it. We always knew what ours was. Right. Just had to wait to get there right. so that we could put them together. Right. So if, if, the, if the time changed and right now it gets voted on in April that we've already been spending mm -hmm. how many months from January right, until January April? First, right. So four months. Well, actually more because you're spending on money that's not a tax commitment that, that goes out in June. So that money, when, when they, we collect taxes or whatever, that... That's August. August. That get so money in it's August. it's a lot before. I mean, this you hope you don't run out of money. Right. That's why we've right. done tans in the past to cover right. that two or three months. And, but then if you if you move that from April to June, then you're going even further of spending money without just that paying. one time. Once you get on a regular schedule, and it will really help out the residents because it will be a two tax collection time. You'll collect in uh, April and October. So the residents won't have to come up with all of their taxes at once. Even that one year? Because I that think one that year, would I'm, not be fair to extinct them people Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that, and i got to flush it out, and i got to talk to MMA and all that, but I'm thinking if you went 18 months, it would be six months. And then you'd be on that six month the whole time. Mm -hmm. But I, I just got to flush it out. I just, I just want you, all you folks to kind of talk about it, talk to your neighbors about it, because I think it's really, I mean, most towns do it that way, and they do it for a reason, because it's just, Easier, you not you not you don't have so much of a crystal ball in front of you. You can nail down some of those numbers right as you're going, and right, you're so in this, line with everybody else. But the selling point is, if you want to sell it to go to eight, you know, to start on July first, what are we paying for interest for the tan? I would assume that's not inconsequential. I mean, we argue about mm -hmm. uh, right. ten grand on somebody's budget. Is the tan one hundred thousand? Is it? I've no, no, it wouldn't be that much, I don't believe, but could be, I guess. Some of your numbers in the shortfalls are in there. You can kind of look at, this is what I do. I 
coming in new, this is some of the stuff that I look at and I talk with the auditor and I'm actually getting the auditor and Ruth together to come down with these numbers. So I have a pretty concrete set of numbers that everybody's agreeing on. Right now I don't have that. So I don't throw out numbers because if I throw out numbers, someone's going to say, well, you said on that, and I just right. ain't no. I've been at it long enough. They wouldn't do can, that. Can so. we back up just a sure. minute? Because I think when I hear you moving the, it to out to 18 months, that first year. It's an 18-month budget. Okay, but I was thinking that first time that the people had to pay their taxes, it would really hurt fixed income people, but how would it would affect people... Um, that have a mortgage, would their escrow have to go up to cover that amount? So. Or, yeah, so that would some, really hurt everybody. There'd be some adjustments. Um, I think know, like I said, we'd have to flush it out, but I, yeah. I think you, I, uh, if it were, I'm going to encourage you to go July 1st, I whether it takes one year or two years. That's 80% of your towns are on that schedule, and there's a reason for it. But it's got to be affordable to, for them to get well, to that exactly. point. Right. The key point you know what is I mean? affordability, and if I have to come up with six more months within that month, that year, right? that's six more, six more months of taxation within a 12-month period. That's an extra that's, four that's, 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 I don't We don't that. know that. I don't get that. Why, why, they have to, why can't they just pay six months? Right. I don't know. Right. Well, see, that's what we got to flush out. Well, so we're getting ahead of ourselves without really knowing. Well, what Alan kind of mentioned, we'll say you tax at three thousand dollars a year. Three. Half of that's fifteen hundred. Then six more months is fifteen hundred. Now, if we're going to an eighteen month, then you kind of fifteen hundred. Six months. Yeah. Right. But it's well, every I'm six. I'm at eighty five hundred. So. Well, I'm just <laughs> I'm just using that as an example. I, I'm thinking. You know, we'll have to flush it out. Put examples up. And figure that this out. is a discussion for down the road. It right? is. Because, I mean, we're not going to do that. No, we're not doing year. that. Oh, that has to be approved so, by the town, anyway. Well, but, that's right. that was what my other question is: is that that's something that goes on a warrant, and the town has I to vote for? I don't think so. I think the select board can. No, I don't decide think that. so. I believe they can. Yeah, I believe they, they can. can. Yeah. Yes, I would. If I was on the select board, I know there's a lot of things the selectman can do without town permission. Being in this town as long as I have, and having some of them people. I would at least make sure they're well aware and not just do it, because you might find yourself hung well, by the nearest tree if you right. didn't. Well, there'll be, there'll be plenty of input. That's why I'm talking about it now. Right. Right? It's, it's just so we get there and I think in the short term, it. I think in I the short term. I might even mention term. it at the town meeting this April that we ought to think about going to that. Oh, it ought, no, year. sure, it ought to be. So we'll get the conversations going, and we'll, we'll flush out the impacts to, to everybody to See what that's going to be. I'm sure there's going to be some, but if you do it in 2024 by 2026, all the wounds will be healed, and you'll be on a you'll be on a regular schedule. You'll get you'll get taxed every six months. That'll help the cash flow for residents that are having a hard time paying all their taxes at once. You know, I think in the grand scheme of things, it, it's it, it sounds thing. great, but I think of the the individual that has to come up with those funds. It's tough. You know, fixed income or young people just starting out, you know. It's so, Jane, some of those are having a hard time now with collecting them all at once now. Right. I'm sure. But I'm sure they're out there that say, well, I have to pay all my taxes at once right now. Right, but that goes back to your responsibility comment earlier. You know every year Christmas is coming at the same time. Thanksgiving is the same day. <laughs> taxes are the same. So if you don't plan your budget. Right. You know. It don't matter That's why whether we six have these months, discussions eight, 18 right. months to let people know playing. so they can start saving them. That's why we have those discussions. I think in the short term, I completely understand and will also feel the impact of that. But in terms of the bigger picture, yeah. I think in order to save the money that we're spending on interest or to be able to come up with a budget that has been, you know, not. I feel like we really scrutinize over what we have, but with more time to do better work, to put something together, I think in the long run, it it leaves the potential to actually help the taxpayer versus that that short term. Mm -hmm. You know, I I just I, it really bothers me how condensed the amount of time. I mean, even when we were doing meetings last year and we had the three dates, and then something happened and we had. We had two dates. We had to get we had to get it done. We were here super late, like 1030, whatever, one night because we had to get it done that night. And it I just I feel like 
it doesn't necessarily do justice to the process to, to have it so tight that way. I don't disagree with that. I just, I worry about the people trying to get from point A to point B right. and still be able to live in the town. I agree. I, I do. I One of the things that I actually asked about when I had this conversation was like, would that bridge be something that the ARPA funds could be used for? They can't, but I, I, I wonder how other municipalities have gone from this to that and been able to bridge mm -hmm. that gap in a way I'd be curious that people can but manage help it. me understand it there's two isn't it two different topics one is ex changing the date we start the budget the other is the date you start the budget process mm -hmm. so and I struggle to understand why you couldn't start the process earlier I get it that if you know in August you may not have real good action which you'd have five months or whatever which is not bad but then you have another four months five months six months to get to the final budget where you could say okay look at you know gas went up a lot more than we expected to so we got to modify that number and tweak it but calvin knows ought to know how many miles he's going to pave next year chief knows whether his breathing apparatus stuff is starting to fail so there's a lot of things that you, he you know in august that you ought to be able to say, here's what, you know, here's what I need as a fire chief. Here's what I need as a, uh, a road commissioner. Here's what I need as a cemetery commissioner, whatever it may be. I'm not sure why you can't start that with the best information available you and could. modify it over time, which is separate from mm -hmm. whatever day you start the budget. That's, to me, two different conversations. Right. John, just, if, uh, different, just to throw it out there, a different point of view. I'm not in disagreement of you, but so... T take what you just said and balance it with the fact that we'll look at the, our budget in January and we'll see certain budgets or certain line items went way over or were well under. And those, those are usually two immediate points of contention mm -hmm. with members of this committee. Why did something go so far over and why did something go so far under? Well, in August, we wouldn't know if, uh, just using your example, if let's say we started meeting in August or September, we would know that those scenarios were about to play out. I think you would have, have a pretty good feel for it because if our budget starts in January, so in August you've had at least seven months of actuals, and then it you would have time in November to sit down and say, how close are we? I mean, I'm not talking about coming up with a final budget in August. I'm talking about particularly the staff starting the process and starting to say and getting the feedback. What do you want for... Um, a pay raise this coming year. You know, what is it that what the world is at? telling us? What is what is it best for kids? I mean, there's a huge difference between January, February, when we when, when you all finalized the budget, and what the gas price was in April or May or whatever it was. And so, who who knew that it was going to go up two and a half bucks in in two and a half days? But again, I'm not sure why you you couldn't we couldn't, and maybe the budget committee doesn't even get involved till. November, but you certainly could with guidance from the selectmen or guidance from us and the selectmen or whatever, start putting it together. Yeah, we could. I, I, I can just tell you, even by looking at this process and how tight it was, I was saying, I don't know how they do it. I mean, this is, my words were, this is insane. It was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, there's nothing but, preventing department heads from deciding the budget anytime they want to. Right. They have a, they, if I was running the show, I'd say, your budget's due at this point. Right. Start well, whenever you want. You, right. You might do that 12, 14, 24 months into your job, but I don't know if you'd do that three months into it when you're just coming in like I well, am. Well, I'm not right into it. <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure it out. Well, with that being said, though, I think a lot of us are looking at, at that and saying, please right. come in here and tell us how to do it well, better right, because we get, all take issue with the way things are done. Right, but i got to figure that out. I right. mean, you're just not right. going to figure that out in right. three months' time. I'm I mean, just saying, there, just will be, there would be people behind you right. that if you came in here, and, and I totally get wanting to walk. Because I said last year, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah, right. I'm just going to watch this to learn the process, right? But right. part of us are like, we want a fresh set of eyes. We want someone else that knows what they're doing to look right. at this. We want, right. like, we all feel like there's an issue here. Right. You're you're validating the fact there is an issue here. Well, the timing is and everything. And, you know, as a manager, I mean, managers sometimes are going to a town and turn the town right up on its head. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to come in here and change everything, get everybody all wound up. And I mean, I could easily do it, but no, you couldn't. You'd have a town office full of people. Absolutely. So, so I'm just sort of like seeing how all this works here, and then taking some of the experiences that I've gained over the 20 years and suggesting some, maybe some changes as I go. But it ain't going to be anything like drastic right off the right off the, so the bat. Jerry, you know, one of the things that would help this committee and it certainly has in the past is whenever we're addressing specific articles and if we're transferring money from a specific fund how much is left in that fund for one thing that didn't that wasn't always readily available to us certainly last year and that's one thing that we always okay how do we know if you're asking for fifty thousand dollars to be transferred to cover an expense, what's left in the fund? But that we're transferring we from? Pardon me. Yeah, you know, we're transferring from. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Where, I mean, that's all fair. Right. So one of the. I mean, it's all out in the open. It's all public information. Anyway. Right. 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 So one of the things that I learned when we were having the conversation about the ARPA funds, and I was, I was specifically asking what funds <coughs> in the capital accounts <coughs> and then what I was given was the balance in the account on December 31st not what the current balance was right what had been expected throughout the year exactly and or it also didn't account for what we had voted on um, at town meeting mm -hmm. being put into that account and and then that goes to what you were saying about how some of that is in trio and some of that is on an excel spreadsheet those two things it doesn't match up and so that's why like i i actually wanted a number in the bank account my brain was saying the way that this worked was that there's the town's account and then there's a sub account that says capital improvement public works and i wanted to know the balance in that account that's not actually how this works. No. And I, I mean, and maybe I was ignorant to that. I had no idea. That was, that's what I thought was happening, but that's not, in fact, what's happening. It's just on paper. Yes. The ARPA money is in the chart of accounts in TRIO. It's the reserve counts that, that is, it's going to be once I get to the bottom of the, once I get to the bottom of what's supposed to be in there working with the auditor and Ruth and that sort of stuff. We'll, we'll add it to the chart of accounts and trio. Before it was in the spreadsheet. So that's where it was capped. So I, I just have to say how much I appreciate so that. So that's going to happen. That. It's just going to take me a little while to right. flush it out. That's all. So already, ha just based on that right there, I feel like we're in a better position than we were in terms of like investigative type of what, where is this and what does this mean? Remember the $500 um, animal control number that nobody could explain until Jill remembered that if a dog get put, gets put down and the owner doesn't claim the dog, that the vet bill goes to the town. And we all wanted to know why are we funding this if nobody even knows what this is for. So I appreciate the fact that you are trying to make all of it make sense yeah. and get to the bottom of it you know, because that's important to me. I think it's important to everyone. And I don't think that everybody really realizes how messy it is. And so thank you for the work that you're doing. Well, to clean well, it up. well thanks. And it, it is trying to get to the, to the bottom of what this is. I mean, this budget that got loaded index um, trio last year is not well developed at all. No. I mean, you look at the workman's comp line for fire and they got loaded in at 5,500 bucks. Their workman's comp is fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> so you so imagine the manager Someone coming in and, in and seeing this. Yeah, and and remember though. So let's just back up a little bit. We kind of had the perfect storm here, right? You had two administrators leave. You got two brand new people in that office that didn't have any municipal experience whatsoever, none. And they're learning, and they they're doing good. They're doing they're, really well. They're getting there, and they're learning, but. You know, mistakes get made, and you know you think you're doing it right, and well, you know maybe not. And you try to, you takes you five minutes to make a mistake. It takes you five hours to figure out what it was and where you find it. And that's kind of the, that's kind of where we were at. This this didn't get loaded good. I mean, the money's there, we're all good, but when I looked at this budget, I was like, okay, we need to 
really clean this up. There's a lot of lines in here, and it really should be a three-tiered budget. It should be your departments, administration, fire, work, uh, fire, public works, and it really should be a buildings and grounds. It should really only be four. And then you have like, then you have a line that might say fuel, and then under fuel will be propane and heating oil. In public works, under utilities, he pays phone, cable, propane, heating oil, and a bunch of other things under utilities. Well, that ain't, that's not good. I mean, I, I want to know if, I want to know what we're spending on fuel, and I want my own line for fuel, and I want to know what's in propane, and I want to know what we're paying for heating oil. When you jumble it all in, you got to go pull the sheet, and you're doing a whole heck of a lot of math to try to find out what are we paying for heating oil. Mm -hmm. So there's just a lot of cleanup here that needs to take place that I hope to have done in a, in a new budget. But understand, TRIO is very um, convoluted, say, because that software talks to the state software. It talks to all kinds of different things. So once you have a budget loaded in there, it's just not a matter of going in there and changing it like it's an Excel spreadsheet or a Word doc. There's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes where once you get that budget set and you hit that button, because there'll be different numbers and different everything, so there's a process. And TRIO will have to walk us through that. Um, but it really needs to happen because there will be more transparency in the budget. We only have two items now. If you have three, you can really nail down where you're spending your money. So uh, we just, just a quick question on TRIO. I, I just assumed that the spreadsheets we got every year were an ex ex export from TRIO. Some of them are. So there's a lot of, right, so there's a lot of spreadsheets that recreated what TRIO was already giving you. So I'm not even sure why we're printing out so many spreadsheets when you can just print out TRIO and we get used to working with TRIO. Right. That's, that's, that's what I think we be. had last year uh, at some yeah, point. I think you had both. I think you got both going on because you, like you like to punch in the numbers into the Excel spreadsheet to see what it does to your budget. Right. Which is important. I mean, I mean, I think that's okay. But whatever Trio, you can get a spreadsheet from Trio, right? Right. You can export it over to Trio. Yeah. yeah. And then you got to manipulate everything to make it work. It just puts it in the cells. You got to expand them and all that sort of stuff. But why not just print the report out of Trio and just, here you go? Well, so there's so a lot of there was a lot of stuff that was recreated that I found in there that comes out of Trio. But people like spreadsheets, and that's what they want to spend their time doing. And so, so I like the spreadsheets. For a lot of reasons, but you can't just take the trio reports and convert them to Excel. You can, but you got to massage them once they're in Excel. The cells might be small, so you got to expand them. Okay. Things like that that some things might be jumbled a little bit. You know, it's not as easy as just click, click, and here you go, and it's all nice and neat and clean. It is out of trio if you like trio. Are are you proficient in trio? Um, not, no, no. I've always had staff that ran Trio. You know, it's, it's what I like to say, you know, the CEO of Delta isn't flying the plane. You know what I mean? He's kind of, he's kind of. Is there anyone here that right. is proficient with no. Trio? Nope. We used to have. <coughs> right. Okay. We were left in a. We have nobody that's proficient in Trio? So how do we get them to that point? Well, like you said, you, this, well, this right. confirms the garbage in, garbage out. Right. You get them if you if you if you populated all these fields in trio and it really wasn't done. Correct. Correct. You struggle with it until you can get it all. Which we're working on. I mean, I can load the. There are some things, the basic things I can do in there, but I mean, this thing handles your taxes. It handles everything. It's a very big program. I mean, Isn't the budget entered in trio? Yep. Yeah. That's, that's where the mistake was. That's, that's, like that's where some of the mistakes were. Who, who yeah. enters it? Well, I don't, not, I don't really want to throw anybody out. Oh, but it's, it's, it's done here. here. Come on. It's oh, yeah. Here. It's the yeah. responsibility of the town. Right. Um, Do you want to explain this? Or is this just for our viewing? This pleasure? is just, this is what you, <laughs> no, yeah, you can look at this. This is, this is what I got from the auditor, and she's going to be going over that. Is this, a, is next. this who does our audit? This, I'm just, I'm like looking RKL. at this, and I'm thinking, huh, who, who paid for this? <laughs> oh, we paid for that. We pay for an audit. Yeah, yeah, but this is who this is. This is the audit? Yep, okay. this is the audit. This is, a. Uh, so and this is being presented next Tuesday. To this the is going to be yeah at next Tuesday at the select board meeting. I'm having to come in to go over the, part of the responsibility of the town 
manager is to present the financial status of the town. No better person to do it than the person who audits the town. How that happened, she's coming in this year on February 6th to do the 2022 stuff. They're here for a week. They sit right in this room and they go right in there. When they want something, they say, I need this, 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 and this, and they just start putting it all together. So any information I give you is gonna come from the audit. It's the best information that I have. I'm not gonna go with anything else other than what's in here. This is 21 data this is 21. done in February 22. This, actually, this is 21 data that was, I finally got the report this August. Okay. Okay, so they will do 22 and Feb start in February 6th, they'll be in here. Jerry, what is the schedule for budget? being presented and we're going to go over that i have i have stuff to hand out right here for you so that's one of the things that we need to discuss because i i kind of want it to go a little bit better than last year from what i understood you know i kind of um last year was pretty much one of those poofs it's really not wasn't there well you know it's well I, it was a it was a hard year for Daryl. let's just put it that way we like to look forward yes. yeah that's, that's right let's look out the windshield and not we can glance in the rear view mirror and see where we can make improvements and see where we've been. But this is just sort of all getting an understanding. Like I said, from where I come from and what we did, I'm a, I'm a big numbers guy. You know, I want to know when, when we get into budget season, my main concern is what is the tax impact? What I, with the budget we're asking for that we first put together, what does that do? To our residents' taxes, <clears throat> I'm I'm going to be honest. I'm not so concerned about line by line by line by line. I'm not. I mean, I am. I, I want it to be reasonable, but I want that tax rate. If that go, if that's really high, then this we need to adjust something. something that's yes, sure. at, but if it's stable, mm -hmm. I mean, what are we talking about? I mean, really. At the end of the day, if it's stable, say it doesn't change or it goes up just a little tick. Okay, uh, you, you guys can squabble over the line by line, but I'm the big picture guy. That's what I'm more concerned with. Imagine a new town manager coming in and he puts together a budget and it's freaking through the roof. I, I, I don't want to do that, right? I don't want to do that at all. That's the last thing I want to do, so that's where I'm going to be concentrating. And once I see where that bottom line is, if it's too much, then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start looking at the biggest pieces of the pie, public work. So your three biggest items, right, is, um, well, your two is school and your county tax. If you had water and sewer, that would be your next. And then it's usually public works. And it's, bro it's broken right out for you in that pie chart that mm -hmm. she put together for you where your money's going. Again, <clears throat> keep in mind, you know, you talk, and I know you I think it's a lot, but it's 25% is what we're is what this makes up. This budget here, so just keep that. Keep, you know, 1,500 bucks or 25% of the whole budget is pennies on the dollar, pennies when you spread it out over everything. So, and again, keep in mind it's a forecasted estimate. You don't know. Like I said, I may ask for 5,000 based on actuals and what it was, and. You may say, well, can you get away with 4,500? Yeah, sure, but we're both probably wrong. You know, that's at the end, you know, we're, oh, oh, yeah. it is. Yeah. That's just the, the nature of it. So just think about it in those terms when you when we get going. So our, I just have a question about the, so our trash contract is up in June of 2023. Three, yes. Okay. So they're on that fiscal year too. So okay. start, we have to have a new one in place by July 1st. So when we get together, and we're talking about trash for the 2023 year. Are you trying to shop for? I'm putting it out to bid. Okay. It's going out to bid. So I will mail it to Casella, um, Waste Management, Triano, and uh, Riverside. And then it's going to go on the website and it's going gonna, it's gonna to go out to bid and see what we get. Okay. And right now, I don't. Right now, I don't know what to put in the budget. I, you know, they, you know, I can show you an email. I mean, if you want to see it, because I asked them, and they said, well, if you're going out to bid, we're not going to provide any numbers right now. And most people won't at this time of year. They'll wait 
And that's another reason why we should go to the fiscal year because everybody's working on their budget then. You know, they're, they're getting close and they may give us a number. I'm not happy that they wouldn't give us a number because they're a business. And all they had to do was say, just add 15%. That should cover it. Right. They just, they just, they don't want their numbers out public. Right, but if it's a still bid, right, but I'll well, they don't have to show the bid number. Like no. when I was in, in the private sector, when towns wanted estimates on their roads, I'd give them a budget number. So I'd say I'd look at their roads and look at how close they were to a plant, and I'd say, mm, you know, you're looking at eighty-five dollars a ton, knowing that we're probably going to come in and bid at eighty-one, seventy-nine, something like that. But that gives them a budget number to go to. Mm -hmm. town with them. That's all I was looking for with this, with Casella. But so I added. I just, I just added. I went up to three fifty. I don't know what to put in there. You guys can put whatever you want. We'll find out when we get there. But that's that's why doing these is difficult, and you don't want to don't want to try to get too tight. We'll get we'll get in trouble. You know that's the and if you, the beauty is if you don't spend it, it just will roll back into the next year. You know maybe that'll offset taxes then or whatever but so, there's a way to handle that something we might want to consider i think we took it out last year was the bulky, bulky waste, waste right and i've already seen trash and refrigerators and stuff so so right now i have calvin collins got sell see if they'll give us a number on what that might be because before it was 10 grand yeah but what would it but what would it be next you see that's what's difficult to, to know and put a yeah. number on a lot of this stuff is even though you have actuals and years before it's you're hoping you get it right but some of it you will some of it you'll come right on because they're fixed cost so part of the conversation around like the trash thing was that we pay to recycle and people and i am ignorant i don't know if that's what everybody does or what the deal is with that but that is a hot topic for a lot of people that we pay to recycle and I mean, I can just assume that that must be what every what everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why that's so upsetting. If that's what everybody does, I don't know if that's what everybody. does. I don't does. think that's the right language. We don't technically pay. It's just part of the whole fee, right? right. Yeah, we pay for the tag, so it, which is, and that's why the price is three bucks a tag. It kind of forces people to recycle either that or pay. But no, I mean, I think as a municipality, it costs us money to recycle because we have the streamline right well, just, just the pick up, just the pickup there's a charge just for picking up I mean, the, you know the market for recycling is gone down gone down so bad because uh, we used to send an awful lot of the United States did to China and they've said you're contaminating this information the recycling is contaminated we don't want it so where's the market I think and it's that if you don't have a market, I mean, the demand is people want to recycle, but. Yeah. I think it's a discussion the town really needs to have about what they want to do. It's kind of like if you're. Heated discussion. If you take stuff up there to yourself up there, to MWAC, which occasionally I have, you'll have times where if the market's up there and you drop off old Mr. Steel, you might get them for pennies. But when the market's down, you just drop it off, you don't get nothing. And that's just. Same with like cardboard or whatever. But So Yarmouth has a transfer station in Gray, so. As part of my job and responsibility, I, I got to have a conversation to see how they got started and what they did, and kind of, kind of bring that out, kind of, and just talk about it. Because I mean, your trash for three fifty—that's a—that's pretty expensive. That's that's up there. In Gardner, we, what we did there, was <clears throat> Augusta had a landfill. We just paid, and that was called Hatch Hill. We just paid them like fifty grand, and the residents took their own garbage up there. What, I think what drove us to this, if I remember, because we used to have our own town dump, but it came in time that that had to be closed, and the state said you can't close it without having something offered to the people. So that's why we ended up headed in this direction. Right. And just keep, in, years, but. just keep in mind, I mean, if that's something the town is looking to do and want to go in that direction, that's a long conversation. Yeah. you got to get the right players involved. you got to kind of maybe do a feasibility study if you can't even do it. There's going to be permitting. If it's off a state road, you're going to get the DOT involved. I mean, that's just a long, long conversation. That's the same about. process we went through before we ended up with a town crew. Right. And that's we did the same thing. So you started early. Let's think go. through it rather than on a right. town meeting, somebody get up and said, man, I think it's a great idea right. to save $10,000 and eliminate bulk trash day. 
And now, you know, you find mattresses alongside the road and at the boat landing, which is the state's problem. But, uh, you know, let, let's not have a, a knee-jerk reaction at town meeting, whatever right. we do. So right. I think one thing that would be beneficial is to be able to know that $10,000 saved the taxpayer what percent do you know what I mean? Like, if my taxes are $3,700, not funding the $10,000 bulky waste day saved me... 20 bucks. 1995. Maybe. Right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. I feel like that that would be a really beneficial yeah. conversation because if I knew that it was going to save me $20, right, versus the excess of trash that has been I would rather pay the 20 bucks mm. that's me personally I'm there to vote you Heather, know what I mean Heather you're smart enough to figure that out I know uh, well no I'm not because <laughs> yes I am just not right on the spot and that's something that Tom would expect from the budget committee I would say right yeah, yeah. so true. I think that like, can we put that down yeah, that that's do. one of our things that we're gonna we, we figure always, out we always used to say for every hundred thousand dollars it would bring the mill rate up People have to be able to relate to. People can relate to ten thousand dollars. They can't relate to one point five million dollars. Right. 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 So I can't. I haven't. I think though, if we had had that information and said what that was, yeah. Oh, yeah, that probably would have changed the way that that vote I don't know, went. The town was pretty conservative last year. I thought. I agree. Yeah, well, I agree. Well, well. I agree, but yeah. I there mean, was, there was also a lot of smoke being blown about. It's really easy to take it over to Auburn. Yes. Yeah. Just call me, and yeah, I'll yeah, come yeah, and get it for you. Right, right. Yeah. And but the other thing also was that we, um, we hadn't done it. We hadn't not had it. Mm -hmm. Now we've had a year where we've not had it, and I think it is. We are able to see there is more stuff that has ended up on our roadside. Yeah. So is that, is that factual? Is that anecdotal? The because I know I'd see it on Plum Mill all, Road all the time. Stuff's been dumped there. I walked that road for four years. Every year, trash is there. And we're all assuming this trash gets dumped by locals, right. which I think is a lot of hooey. I'm from Lisbon Falls. I got to get rid of a refrigerator. I'm going to take it over and throw it off in a back road in Durham. I agree with you. I agree with you. I think it's yeah. So yeah. I agree with you. I would, I would like to see, okay, you know, if everybody thinks that this is such a great idea, we go one year and then somebody monitor the next year and find out just how much less stuff is on the side of the road. Cause and I, I think Calvin can answer that. Yeah. I mean, he and I have had that conversation pretty quickly. And I think, and the other thing is, it, it's not cheap to go over to the Auburn Way. I mean, we're way off the main topic now, but it's not cheap to, to go to uh, the Auburn Waste thing yeah. if you have a pickup truck. I can tell you from, from when we used to have it till not having it, I can tell you our road has a lot more crap on it than it used to. Yeah. I've seen refrigerator, so uh, some trash. I can't tell you what it is, yeah. but it's there. And I know. Matt, I mean, it's not Jerry, because we, I moved to town last no, year. No, no, no. <laughs> but in, to Rod's point, Jerry, are we yeah, still on, on target here? Yeah, pretty much. I, yeah. Um, yeah, so we got to talk about the schedule. I just got a couple more questions I just want to feel you guys out on. Um, so a lot of towns have budget committees, and when they go to town, when they go to the town floor, Typically, they try to get in this room, not in this room, but in their room, the budget committee and the select board with the same number on every article. What's your feeling on that? It doesn't happen in this town, usually. Why is that? Because the town looks to us to save money. And the, and the select board typically. So there's a mindset cut. Regardless, just cut. Mm. Not no. cut, maybe no. lower, lower the increase. Increase in not what? Increase in spending. Okay. What's the, we haven't had a budget cut for, I don't know, a long time. Okay. There well, has been times when both committees have agreed. Yeah. And sometimes if they're within 500 bucks, it's easy enough to right. make that. But there are other times it's not. And sometimes it's not whether or not they agree on the amount. It's where it comes from sometimes. You know, if you want to take it out of, out of the designated fund or if you want to raise it on the floor, you know, sometimes that's some of the difference. Yeah. Historically, I would say the town has looked at the budget committee to – Lower the increases. Typically, our number is less than the budget uh, than the select board, but not and, always. It's and, not, and oftentimes, the reason why it's it's presented, and this is a fairly recently. I mean, we're talking about within the last decade. The reason why on the warrant it shows that the select board and the budget committee agreed on the amount is because after 
it came from the select board to the budget committee and the budget committee recommended a lower amount the select board then changed their recommendation to be an agreement perfect so it wasn't that the it never got to the floor the yeah perfect. so yeah. It, it, it had the select board not changed their um what's the word i wanted to, recommendation yes then yeah. the town would have seen two different figures yeah, they, they, right many, many years the selectmen did their presentation and the budget committee did and that the two entities never got together. We do now. We have that's for the good. last, I don't know, three or four years. Is, yeah. That's, been good. That, that's, that's made been a difference. Good. Yeah. yeah, It's opened up that communication. That's awesome. One yeah. thing that I think has also helped is that we had a year where the residents did not vote to increase the tax levy. Right. And when that happened, a lot of people got a lot more educated about the fact that not increasing the tax levy was a way to reduce overall spending. Yeah. And so I think the select board now fears that if they don't come in under, if the, if the residents don't vote to raise the tax levy, then they're going to have to come under that number anyway. And so I think they actually work harder to do that, or at least they did the, this past I, I budget, right, Heather, yeah. Yeah. this past budget cycle, um, in fear that the residents would not vote to right. raise the levy. Right. There's a push from a bunch of town managers that are trying to get rid of that tax levy limit, just because they live in smaller towns, and the cost of doing business has gone higher than the tax limit, so they're having a hard time just running their town. They don't have the you know, residents are like, no, no, we don't want to go higher than that. And it's like, well, look, they don't realize we, we've got costs that we need to cover that we can if we don't. So just, I just thought I'd throw that. It's, it's, it's not real black and white out there. There's a lot, of, a lot of different gray area. And I think that, you know, whenever that was the year, the, the year that it got voted down, mm -hmm. raising the levy got voted down, was the year that we didn't have in-person town meeting because of COVID, right? Whenever we have had in-person town meeting, it's been a, they've been able to explain the reasons why the tax levy is going to increase, you know, to be able to fund this budget that is being put before them. But I think that that year, you know, COVID was hard and it was really yeah. hard financially, not yeah. only on the town, but it was really hard financially on the taxpayers. And so that was their way to vote to limit how much you can how much they yeah. were gonna have an yeah. increase yeah do you want to get yeah. back to the um, schedule yeah one more se one more second um yeah. so i also noticed what we do in your budget is you list your revenue source per article mm -hmm. like you know do this do this. so we may get away from that and just list the revenues because it doesn't matter what you pay for. you got revenues in both pocket rather you pay it out of your left or you pay it out of your right it really doesn't matter. So you've got your list of revenues and you've got your expenditures. Expenditures are gonna be more than your revenues and the rest you raise in taxes. So that's a, because you're estimating what you're gonna pay for out of those revenues, but they're not gonna be right. You might collect more. So you might say, you know, 5,000 is gonna come out of excise tax to help pay for the public works. Well, you might collect 5,500 that year so it's wrong anyway so what difference does it make it just just list it and then just go that's what most towns do they i asked a couple of town managers about you know do you revenue source your articles and they're like what are you talking about i've never even heard of it i don't know what you're talking about i think he's talking so, about how we say raise or we say transfer, transfer. Yeah. like snowmobile tags so my question with that then though would be because when the way that you word the article it if it you're going to raise it, right, it's, it's because one if month, it's a closed it's item where you can't raise the amount of money on the floor, right? If you're raising the taxes, the wording of the article is different than if you're not raising. Right. So I don't understand how it works if we're not going to say where we're, what, how it's getting funded because that, the wording of the article, what, you whatever doesn't to, get, whatever doesn't get paid for with revenues is going to get paid by raising your tax mm -hmm. and that'll be listed what that is 
So I'll that, show you. I can show okay. you because many uh, yeah, towns need, do I, it that I wanna, way. I would need an example for that. Because that, cause in that way, you, again, you're doing a lot of unnecessarily unnecessary math to put everything together. It just takes an enormous amount of time. Where if you because our revenues are already listed, it's just a matter of putting it in there. It's done. But now you got to go through each article, make sure you get that number, which isn't going to be correct because it's an estimate anyway, right? Because you don't know what you're going to collect in 2023 in excise tax or dog licenses or this or that, but you're going to estimate it. So just list them and it's all, again, all of this is forecasting and estimating. There's really nothing that's exact other than the mill rate. That, that stays pretty exact through the year. But anyway, I just kind of throw that out to you because it's just easy to put together in the whole nine yards. I mean, you folks have been doing it the same way for a very, very, very long time. And there have been other folks and that, have, that are in municipal government that have figured out an easier, streamlined way of, of doing it. So That's, that's going to come down to education. Because right, absolutely. In, in this town, we want to know exact figures based on a guess. And, you ain't and, gonna and, get it. <laughs> yeah, you're but, not gonna get it. But that's what we do. We provide exact figures based on guesses, and people are happy with it. You know. Well, you're fooling them though. You're not telling them the truth. Correct. Right? And that's right. what, you know. To your point, right. to do it your way, you're gonna have to get people used to. We're not gonna be doing the smoke and mirrors. We're gonna be you know here's the revenue, here's this, here's the difference. Right. Instead of okay, you're gonna spend exactly this much out of capital improvement. This much is coming out of out of. Uh, excise tax so that equals the rate yeah and, rate and it's change. probably wrong so yeah exactly okay but just i just throw that out there i just yeah. think there's some things that will talk and again this is all going to be discussion before anything gets changed it's just going to be easier i think in the long run to for everyone to, to to get and understand and put together and all right so i need now i need to push you towards the schedule because yeah we're, we're at our time all right, so you guys, I have one here. Let me get mine. So let's back into it. So on February 15th, all reports need to be due. So that means this is for, for Kimberly, our public information officer, to get the stuff in the um, annual report so she can put it together to have it to print by March 1st. Gives, it gives the printing two weeks to get it printed, and then it, then that allows for the residents to have the annual report, which has the draft warrant in it in time enough. They need it like 10 days before at least. So we're going to back into this. So all articles have to be in on no later than February 15th. Right. If we can do it. If we can do it, it's going to be... Signed by... Signed so just, that it's going to go to print? No, we can... We've got some other stuff, but just... Because it's going to be a draft, so there, there's nothing here is, you know, etched in stone, you know, when we do this. We, this is going to be a draft, but that's a date. It's flexible. I'm going to allow myself a few days. Nope, just, yeah, yeah, okay. Yep. So <clears throat> if we do that, if you, all right, now that you know that date. So now let's jump to January. So according to this little gem right here that was put together that I have, um, <clears throat> all materials that, as far as budget stuff that you folks need, stuff to the select board, everything in a binder, so you have it uh, January 5th. That's my target date. So I... You're going to give us hard copies versus electronic? I'm going to try to get you hard copies of everything that I'm going to do. Yeah, but I'm yeah. saying electronic. You want electronic? It would be nice yeah, to I'm have hearing, electronic because I can come in here with a laptop. and I can probably do both. If, if I'm going to give it to you. I mean, what's, what's the pleasure of the board? Last year it was electronic and I offered to print it for everybody. So you didn't have three ring binders? Well, we did after the oh. fact because oh. that was what the majority of the board preferred. It, we it kept getting updates on uh, handout, and it was it, it, very confusing. I bet it was. I bet it was. Well, I want so paper if I, copy. If I knew that wasn't going to take place, I prefer the handout. Hey, I'm not a well, computer, right. but you can do both. I, I can mean, do. Both. I mean, it's. I can. I'll do. You got a PDF yeah. or an Excel, and you print it. That's. I mean, if if I can provide a hard copy, I'm certainly providing it electronically because that's where it's coming from. Right. right. So. Yeah. So that's going to be on the fifth. So I'm going to try to get all that to you on the fifth. 
Now, I want you to all keep in mind, too, that the actuals may not be right down to the actuals because we're going to have outstanding invoices that haven't been hit the books yet. So it'll be year to date, but it'll be really close. Close enough, I think, unless you really want to. Yeah, by pull. then it should be pretty close. It's going to be, yeah. It's going to be really close. Um, so then the joint meeting where the budget gets presented is on the 10th. That's the select board's meeting. It'll be over at the Eureka Center. I'll that's, try to, that's us and the select board. Yeah, that's me presenting the budget to you, this board, and the select board. 6.30? Yeah, 6 would be better, but I'll... Six I'll is fine with I me. think we usually do start earlier, don't we? Because they go a long time or no? I don't remember. 6 works for me. I don't care. Well, it's not that early if it's due the 15th. I mean, What's that? I said it's probably not that early if it's due the 15th. No, no, I mean early in the evening because they take a really long time. Oh, Those, that, like The individual meeting itself. I'll check my email for that time. Yeah, you don't check your email. I don't, but... <laughs> So I do have a thing out there that shows. Look at all things Durham. You know. No, I've never been on that. I'll keep you going to text it. Okay. So what's after the tenth? Then the twenty fourth. No, we got down here the the that Thursday the twelfth for another budget presentation meeting two. January. Yep. That's just the budget committee. And 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 select yeah another joint meeting. So you got. Joint meeting on the 10th and the 12th. Six o'clock. Yep. And if we're not done, right, then the 17th is kind of if we need it. Both? Yep. Then on the 24th, the board will vote on articles. Um, then, I guess from you folks, will you have your budget recommendations by February 7th, to, to me at least, or the board? Is that going to give you enough time to... When the select board's done, they give us their recommendations. Yeah, they're going to do it somewhere around the 24th, I believe. One of the one of the Jerry one January. of the confusing one of the confusing things that happened in the first joint meetings was we did not have articles or even an idea of what the articles were going to be, and if we're waiting until if you're waiting until the fourteenth for the select board to vote on articles, I would hopefully there would be some draft articles preliminary yeah, ones. The twenty fourth. Yeah, but I'm saying I'm looking at the tenth. Some idea of some, I don't, I don't know how much, if there's going to be a joint meeting there, we must have some indication of what these articles are going to be. Well, we all have, so we could discuss that then at that meeting Yeah. to go, because he doesn't mention it. There's nothing here on this schedule which was given to me from previous years. Because it seems like, I, as I recall, we ended up with a lot of discussion, but not voting on anything. Well, the 10th and the 12th are informational, right? Just well, we're, we're, yeah, we're, yeah, right. I'm presenting the budget to you, and then I think, yeah, then we're just kind of talking so the it over. So last and, year, the tent, like what is being said here for the tenth and the twelfth, like one night was Kathy, who, well, I don't know, when anyway, presenting the administrative budget, or it, she was split half and half, and then the fire chief and public works presenting their budgets. Right, and I think that's the two. I think I go Tuesday and present. Mine and then on and then on Thursday I think it's public works and as Heather's saying and fire on that Thursday. So are we going to? Is the budget committee going to have a meeting after the select board meets? We typically do it. Okay. okay. If the select board meets the twenty fourth, we would, and we have to have our our recommendation to you by by when did you say, Jerry? I'd like to have it by February seventh, if possible. And that is tight. We have one week. That means we have, the only week. Our only option is that week of January thirtieth. Uh, schedule two or maybe three meetings unless we want to start on the 26th. I mean, we got to have time to 
everyone has to have time to read and I, decipher the select board's recommendations. So if we're not, if they're if they're voting on those on the twenty fourth, we may not be updated till the twenty sixth. Okay. Mm. So I so I. Our meetings would take place on January 30th. We'd have from January 30th until February 6th. We usually are given a two-week window to schedule our meetings to try to accommodate everybody's that, schedule. You take what you need. The only fly in the ointment there is if, if you do that, that's fine. But the warrant article might not get drafted in time to go into the annual report. That's all. We can, we'll have it as a supplement. So, well, I mean, unless we can go ahead and... If, that's up if to you have folks. Eight, eight I mean, out of nine members, it's, it's if, very we wanna, tight. if we think we can do it on the 30th and 31st, we can go ahead and schedule it. Can you, what about penciling in the 26th to see if we can start then? I just have a question. So when we say board will vote on articles... That's a select board. Right. So the, then we're making our recommend... Um, is, I thought we had our meeting before that and that that was their meeting where they voted to finalize for it to be able to go. There's another one, I think, right? If we change anything. So on, yeah. on, on the 24th of January, the select board is reviewing the information that was presented on the 10th, 12th, and 17th. So the budget committee cannot meet until after the 24th right. when we receive the select board's recommendations. Right. If the town manager needs the budget committee's recommendations by February 8th, that leaves a one-week window, that's, which is, that's, that would be new for us. We normally have at least a two-week window to get in our meetings. Well, why don't you push but, the select board's meeting up to the 17th? That's what I was going to say. If they go to the 17th, then... I think they want to do it on their regularly scheduled select board meeting. Um, I mean, I suppose I could. See what they think about that. But if you need another seventeenth is being reserved. If you need another reserved. extra week, you know, do what you got to do, and I'll try to make it work on my end. I'll just I'll go with the just just understand that if things happen and the, the warrant article might not get put in the annual report, that's really what that date is all about. I, think so we could, I mean, so again, it's something we can discuss here. I just I wish I could have Jill's input because she, uh, she is a professional it. and. Um, Owns a business and, and so her schedule is real tight. Uh, but we could, we, I mean, we could, we could schedule a tenant. It just by having a meeting on the 26th, we've had no time to really individually study the select board's recommendations. We're going to be doing it on the fly. I have no opposition to meeting on the 26th, and then we can meet the 30th and that and the 31st. Well, I would think would be better would be to do it on the 30th and 31st and leave. February 2nd open if a third meeting is needed because that. that leaves us a little time to you know do our homework uh, prepare our questions I'm just not good two days in a row working full-time and then coming here from 6 to 10 I'll be a, well, I'll 10, be a 10 was a noodle 10 was it was it was um, an anomaly Normally our meetings are done at nine, uh, at nine o'clock, but we were we were being pushed and there was a lot going on. Normally our meetings are, are done at you know you know by nine, um, but normally we do we have used a third meeting on occasion. Mm -hmm. um, at times, if things are fairly simple, there, there have been times we, we we've been able to wrap it up in two nights, and and sometimes people prefer to go a little bit later on the second night so that the third meeting wasn't necessary. Yep. Uh, my recommendation would be to uh, reserve the 30th, the 31st, and the 2nd, because that still leaves, if we run into trouble, we could still meet the beginning of, we could meet February 6th or 7th and still have a report to Jerry on the 8th. Yeah. As long as I think I get them that week, I think I'll be fine. I, I most of the... Most of the yes. warrant will be already typed, so it's just being mad ahead of editing it. If you are set on deciding this evening, I will support you in that. I, I do feel like it's reasonable to ask the select board to go on the 17th if we find that that meeting is not needed, so that it's less pressure on everyone by getting by gaining that extra week. It's less pressure on you to have to get the reports late because now we can't meet until a week later. Do you know what I mean? So you want the board to vote on 
budget article recommendations on the 17th. Right. But, he, but he's reserved the 17th. It. He's reserved the 17th as for, a to, for a joint meeting if needed. Right. And so my only thing with, that I would say about that is that I know that I significantly contributed to the length of those meetings because I asked so many questions and I was so... And what's going to be different this year? Well, <laughs> because I'm a little more aware of the process and I recognize that my questions are absolutely not going to change anything. And so I... Hey, listen, I'm being <laughs> honest, okay? I know that I significantly contributed to the length of those meetings. So with that being said, I do feel like, unless there's some cre <laughs> you can it's fine. I think the questions are perfectly okay. No, I, I know, but I mean, I went into like strategies of how we could save money in these meetings that they were trying to present this budget to us. It's not, it wasn't the time or the place, and I recognize that, you know, so I do feel like three meetings provided that you can just elbow me and tell me to shut up and I won't be offended. Right. Because it wasn't. So you're going you're to sit between us? Yeah. <laughs> um, what about the 30th? There'll be a roll of duct tape. The second and the sixth. So that way you ain't having two meetings right in a row. I'm not really crazy about that myself. Well, Jerry, you but we well, said just temporary 14th. anyway. You're right. retired. That's right. That's right. your hard and fast, right? <laughs> So this, the, February. there's a yeah. February. There's a little wiggle room there. I just don't want people to take advantage of that. Right. I don't want the, you know those same, same people that will spend money on their budget oh, just okay. because they have it. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if if your date there is you know 14th, 15th, which whichever yeah. day that was, I thought it was the 14th. She ever says 15th. Um, you said you wanted us to report out to you by the 7th, but if if we said we would make that the 9th. Yeah, Would that you, work? Get, yeah you get some that, wiggle room. Yeah, then that way there, we could have Tuesday the 31st, Thursday the 2nd, and then we'd have the 7th as our third option. Then we're not doing back-to-back, -back, and we still get back to you in a timely manner. Right. Well, you got to remember the select board's going to get our recommendations and do something with them. And, yeah. and they have so, to vote on it, have, right? They have to make, vote on it, and, get, oh, and they yeah. get back to... They're going to meet on the 7th and the 21st, so we really have oh, to be right. done so before the 7th. that's why you want to see. Are they, yeah. Yeah. No, they, they meet the 14th, 14th and 28th. It's oh. the second Tuesday. Oh, second. Okay. Yeah. So on the 14th, they'll decide whether they're going to keep theirs or go with ours or change it all together. They'll do that on the 14th of February, right? Uh, I'm sorry. I was looking at the date. Somebody, I was looking at the wrong date. Wrong well, provided month. that they stick to their regular meeting schedule. Right. You know, on the meeting on the 12th, that joint meeting, we can kind of, we're all going to be there. We can kind of go over the schedule again to make sure yeah. we're, we're on the right path. And, so I hear two and options. We can, and we can adjust then. I mean, nothing has to be hard and fast now. We just got to make sure. That so drop dead day does is. Does the committee want to decide now or do we want to mull it over and we'll decide when we have the joint meetings? It sounds like our two options are if we want to get it done in a week. We have the 30th, the 31st, and the 2nd. If there was another option was if you want to spread it out a little bit more, we can go Tuesday the 31st, Thursday the 2nd, and then either Monday and Tuesday the 6th or 7th. Not, not to be a stick of it, I think the sooner we at least hard pencil in dates, the better. Yes. Um, Jill is saying, Jill's saying she can do 26, 31, and 2nd. Mondays are hard for her. She can do two one also. She said the thirtieth is hard. She can do the twenty second, the thirty first, the first or the second, but the thirtieth would be hard for her. So if we set our dates for the thirty first, January thirty first, February second, was that one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good for her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then Tuesday the seventh. I'm asking that. Um, yeah. Or can she do Monday the sixth? Mondays are hard. For Mondays her. are hard. For Any her. Monday, okay. She's read it. She's gonna answer in just a second. Okay. Have we always needed three meetings? We've done, we've been able to do it in two at some at yeah, some for some times. Yeah. So the the one on the but third meeting Heather. would be optional. <laughs> so yeah, the seventh away. would be our third meeting, or that would be the seventh would be. She said yes. The seventh if info. needed. All right. So our me. dates would be Tuesday the thirty first. Write this down, 131. Thursday, Second. February 2nd. And then, if needed, Tuesday, 
the seventh. And we, um, and do we know that there's no committees using the room the first Tuesday of the month? Not that I am aware of right now. No. Okay. Play. No. Are, are you going to come to our meetings, Jerry? If I have to, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Jill. Oh no, I Jill, no, 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 no. Jill I, thinks we, we should start the twenty-sixth, the Thursday. I mean, before. I can. The select I mean, board has been coming, or some of them anyway. I mean, I can. I mean, yeah. I don't mind. But well, if you want to, maybe after that. Well, after the joint meeting, we right? Maybe yeah, we can change yeah, it. Yeah. If, if the selectmen are deciding on the twenty-fourth, we may not even get that info to maybe the twenty-fifth. Or the 26th, so and that's going to be you have to our 24 to 36 hours. <laughs> if, the, if the select would, she my, said 31, 2, and 7 is fine. Okay. And that may change on the 17th if if they're happy with that and they don't need the 24th. Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to be the regular meeting, possibly. Okay. Uh, mm, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, January 5th, I'm going to give you some material. What is it that you would like? Um, what we got last year, I, not the way we got it last year, please, but it was uh, 2020, but 2020, no, 2019, 19. 20, and 21. Okay. Budgeted and actual. Okay. We don't need 19. So 2021. Go back three years. Mm -hmm. Right. Three That's years. what you want? Go back three years, yeah. Want a trio report? Well, and then. And what was actual, what was budgeted and what was actual. And yep. you. 2021 20, and 22. That's what you're going to get. Correct. And That's you easy. asked for the undesignated fund balance? Okay, yeah. you might have it. You might have it right there. Well, that's the 21, so right. I I can pull it out of trio to see if it matches. That's easy. I can just pull it out of trio. It won't be the same if it's the 2022. Right. Um, right. Undesignated fund balance, what were the other things that we had to go back and ask for? Do you remember? The capital improvement five-year projection that came after the fact. When, when, when does the CAP CFP committee make their recommendation? Well, I'm meeting with them tomorrow at 6. Or so the final? It, they might need one more, but they might be able to, they might be able to do their ranking so you'll be able to tomorrow. Provide that for us. So I should be able to have that put together for you. Okay. How does that help you with the expense budget? Well, if we can, put off, if we, if we can put off putting $50,000 into a fund, into a capital improvement fund, or then we would, if we didn't think we needed something sooner than later. Oh, you guys make that recommendation to the. We, we recommend how much to put into a capital fund. Yeah. Say, yeah. Nice. It's a, it's a it's a line item. I mean, it's a warrant article. Yeah. Jill's asking what time we're thinking for the meetings. Six. 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 Six to nine. Does that work for her? Yeah, so that works for her because she's the one that. Works out of town. Yeah. Um. Hey, Alan. We need to do Undesignated, you want? Just, I mean, mm -hmm. think about days that might work. So, and don't plan to have any pre <laughs> And the capital reserve. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to get that to you until I work it out with the auditor and Ruth. I can give you what Trio says we have in there. Okay. But I don't, you know, that's, I, or I can give you the spreadsheet and you can try yeah. to figure it out yourself. Yep. So what, the way that we did it last year was <laughs> it was a spreadsheet and then we put in, like, if we were going to put $50,000 in that spreadsheet, it, and then we were going to spend whatever we were spending on that expenditure it showed us what would happen over five years, right? Mm -hmm. um, On the capital reserve stuff? Mm -hmm. So we have, so this is why I need to get educated. So we have a capital committee. So why is that, what, what are you folks doing it with that? That adds value to what you're doing. I, that's where I get confused. Never had a capital well, they don't, they don't recommend the money. They're right. only recommending well, they, the priority but, of the project. But they, but they still want to see the money. Right. But they, they're not the one making the determination of whether or not, they're only basing their recommendation on the merits of the 
necessity or the, you know, <clears throat> right? Am I saying that yes, correctly? The request. Yes. Yeah. And then they're prioritizing it. And then, they're ranking it, yeah. Right, and then we're making a recommendation on whether or not or how much to fund it. Well, it's usually not a transfer. Usually it's a raise. Right. And it's an article. It's got to be an article to right. raise it. So it'll be an article language to raise it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And the only control we, over ha we have over something like that is not to give them the money. If the select board says we want this and we don't think they need it, then we can just say we're not going to give you the money. That's the only control we have. It's a recommendation. From it's a recommendation that you don't well, get to give them. Yeah, the make the decision, yeah. sure. But, yeah. right. but they're the ones that are going to end up doing what they feel is. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to get clear on that. And that's when I was explaining the thing about the culverts, right? Because we were trying to keep the bottom line of what was getting raised for the capital improvement accounts to, let's just say, $150,000. It was fifty thousand across all three, but Public Works needed a hundred. We reduced the other two by whatever, so that it didn't go over that total amount that we were willing to fund towards capital improvements. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just let me be real clear: no bottom line numbers on the reserve accounts. I'm, until someone tells me what they are, I don't know what they are. That's been that's been an issue with for me, trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So, they don't line up. So that's why the Otter and Ruth are getting together. They don't, and if those two don't line up, so we got to figure that out. So I'm in the process of trying to do that. So you may have to, thank you, kind of wing it a little bit as far as that goes. I mean, you can see it. What we think we have in that report, it's all right in this report. That's the snapshot of the. You'll see it. Uh, and she'll go over it on. Um, I thought it was in here. Let me yeah. Right here, page nine. But that's, again, that's 2021. So <clears throat> I know what got passed in 2022, and I haven't added it until I find out what the bottom is. Then I'll add it. Then I know I'm where I'm at. So you'll have that by the time we hit the... I don't. I, that's, I'm working with the auditor on that. They're, like, super busy, but I'm on it. That's okay. all I can tell you. I'm but I mean, working, we, I'm working fifth on Fifth or whatever. I can't remember what day we go first. Tenth. Yeah, it, it's possible. Um, it's possible that I'll I'll have a, a better number if than I have right now because this quarter. these numbers like this public works capital the seventy four nineteen doesn't match up with Ruth's numbers. With whose numbers? Ru uh, Ruth. Yeah, Ruth's numbers. Um, okay. and she was here in twenty. Twenty one. No. Just, just she left in twenty one. Wow. Well, it makes sense. It wouldn't match. <laughs> It would make sense it wouldn't match. Well, this wouldn't is the 21 match? audit. Why, she was Why wouldn't it match? Oh, this is the 21 audit? Yeah. 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 So she wasn't here in 21, was she? Well, she just left in 21, right? I don't know. I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, but she wasn't but, here, I think, at the beginning. But she wasn't. doesn't matter. We, we had a town that doesn't, it for really like eight, doesn't. nine months. But she, has, she left fairly early. Right. Was, but it would have been whatever. Got, right? Yeah, so it's, it's, hard, it's hard to, yeah, it's, I, I it's hard to so. know right now. I just got to get up with you on that. I got that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, hey, Jerry, I, I have one quick observation I, I want to make. Um, last year, this whole fish thing, the, the culvert thing that got to be a huge fiasco that they raised money for and then never got spent, I, I, we never got really good information. I never got really good information on what this was all about, why we had to do it, and what would happen if we didn't do it. And I asked that question, but I never really got a good answer. And I'm not going to vote for 200 grand to spend on something that we don't know what the real need is, or if we don't do it, what is this, the state sue us or something? And that, no, it's and more of the, the it's more of taking advantage of the grant money. Yeah, that's really what it was. You know, I'm talking just personally. I I'd, I'd like to know no. what the ramifications are on yeah. something like that. It's so, more or less taking advantage of the grant money. So if you don't take the grant money and it goes away, you'll end up. In this case, the grant money costs us 100 grand. 
Well, and now it's now more apparently. It wasn't grant money. It was still a lot of money for the town. Yeah, hundred grand. So yeah. the question then is, do you get work for a hundred grand that may be needed five years later for two hundred fifty or three hundred grand? Right. Uh, yeah, well, that's, this that's is the state telling us. So we need bridges, it. roads, and all that is a pay me now or pay me later proposition. And when you pay later, you pay more. That's the way it works. Well, no one, no one ever really stated that we had to do it. They said the state recommends we do it. Right. So I don't know what that means. A recommendation versus do we have to do it. I thought they said yeah. that we did have to do it. Well, no. I don't think they did. They, they didn't have to tell us. It's, it's a town road. And right. if we had not, we were basically taking advantage of the funds that the right. state was offering. Right. And if we, if we didn't do it that year, that's when the funds were... Available. Allocated, and we had to do it five years later. It's going to be all our bill. Right. The state's not going to contribute a dime. M maybe we don't know that. Anyway, that's just I, I'd like more information on those kind of things. I, and to the committee, you mentioned processes earlier, and I, the, I, I think it would be good for the committee to develop a, a work process for our committee, like a flow chart. I haven't done one for years, but I think it would be very helpful for us to do it. What rules govern our committee? It's very vague to me uh, about that. What are we actually required to do? What, what's our output going to be? What's well, our input going to be? The bylaws are right on the website. They're on the website, and they were signed off in 2015. Right. Established in 1933. That's unbelievable. The bylaws of... I remember that year. He was the only bylaws of... He was only 21. Like, yeah, it yeah. says yeah. that we'll virtually use Robert's rules. <laughs> um, uh, they're, on, they're on the website? The town the website. Yeah, town website. The bylaws are right on there. Just for the, for the budget committee? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just saw them recently. Absolutely. Jerry, I have a question I'm not sure you can answer. So, so following up on Neil's thing about the Mill Creek, so we had, the, we had, we had, we were moving forward with, with raising $100,000 for the fire capital reserve. And then at the last minute, that got cut because the 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 dam, the or bridge, whatever that project was, needed additional m money. Mm -hmm. So, if that hadn't come up, a hundred thousand dollars would have gone towards the fire capital reserve. I think it was sixty, but whatever, same same. Oh, so, well, but same, just same so let's say it was sixty. Yeah, whatever. But, so because the project didn't occur, in effect, the fire department got penalized because it's money that they would have had, which was that supposedly needed for something else. It wasn't needed for something else. Why doesn't it, why doesn't it now go back into their capital I, reserve? Because I think the voters have to vote on that. It is. It was a specific. It right. was broken out into specific questions. We had a fire department question and we had a public works question. And it was already an article. By that right. Article. Yeah. I thought the reason that didn't get done was because the cost came in higher than that hundred thousand. Well, it's because they changed it they to changed, the open they, they bottom changed, grade. They, instead yeah, of they changed the, the state changed the standards right. yeah. for what it, how, how it had to be built. Well, any, came in anything that. with fish passage has the bank width has to be 1.2 bigger than that. Stuff fishing down channel. Yeah. <laughs> Catch some old salmon, would you? Yeah. So that's what that's what where your cost mm -hmm. where you had to go to, to a different size is because of that bank width that they threw at you. So is there going to be a recommendation from the select board for a Warren article to do something with that money? Which money? The money that was allocated for the bridge that never got spent. They it got spent on the other bridge, didn't it? You'll have to educate so. me again. You mean the one on Route Nine? Not so the allocate the state bridge. The, there was a, state there was one hundred and one last year thousand dollars that got put into the public works for uh, <clears throat> for the bridge project. Were there, were there two culverts? There were two. There was one on Quaker Meeting House Road and there's one on Swamp Road. And one of those two didn't go because of the, neither one of them. Oh, neither one went. Neither okay. one of them did. And the reason I uh, asked that know, is I because, history, you know, once I get going, I'll be able to keep up. But because I live a mile from the Durham Lisbon Falls Bridge, and the state is going to be—I don't know if anybody knows where Tracy Brook is. If you go down 125, maybe 
half a mile at the most from the Durham Lisbon Falls Bridge, oh, the yes. 125. Yeah. They're going to be rebuilding that bridge. And my concern was, okay, are you going to close the road? Because I need to know how I'm going to get around. And I thought they were also going to be doing the one on Swamp Road. And if they did the one on, it was like, I have no way to get out of town. Well, I could go to Brunswick. But it was just, and all this, that's why I knew about it. So what happens to this money? That's a good, I don't, I don't, yeah, know, what, I don't know whether it's in escrow with the state because it wasn't allocated because they changed the standard. Wouldn't know. Calvin know where it what, is? What money? Or what, what money are you talking about? We, we raised money for this project, for these projects. In last year's town meeting? Yes. Uh, the two town roads, bridge, the two town culverts. It was bridges. 101, right? Yeah, something uh, like that. Yeah. yeah, so that's in the reserves. Is it? Did the state Should allocate be. it? Oh, we raised it. Right. It's our money. Ah, oh, you're right. Yeah, that part is there, but what the state grant money, I have and no so, idea. You know, and so Calvin's asking for another... 49 50 to, to go with that 101 to get his $150,000 match with a $150 grant match mm. to do it. Mm. That's what's kind of one of his requests this year. Wow. And, it, and you're right. I mean, if you don't want to do it, you just lose out on that 150 grand that's offered in grant money. Yeah, it could, you take a chance. Everything's a risk, right? Right. I don't, think the, I don't think the state, the state wasn't saying you have to replace these culprits. But they're saying if you were going to replace them, right. we're going to provide these funds. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And, it's right, right. and that would make that makes sense with the difference in the price because right. it was I think it was two hundred and two. Yeah. Half our half, half would have been a hundred and one. Yeah. Now they're saying it's going to be three hundred, and so now he needs the other yeah. forty nine to make it one fifty. Yeah. So. That's that's all I have other than this. One last thing. <laughs> this isn't my budget. This isn't your budget. This isn't the select board's budget. It's the people's budget. That's right. So you just we'll get to say keep that in mind as we as we put together the budget. It's I'll return your pen just to say <laughs> I'm a people. Yeah. Oh, I'm a people. Gonna... Well, we all are, right? I mean, Can I take an extra one of these if you have it for Jill, please? Yes, ma'am. There you go. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thanks. Thank I you. appreciate that. Thanks for coming, and hopefully it was okay, enlightening so a little bit. Okay, so this meeting with the it was author good. Tuesday.